Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we talk to you about a cool thing that we've been reviewing here and testing out in PC Labs. I'm Tom Brandt, this is Matt Buzzy, and for you today we have got the Dell Inspiron Gaming Desktop. Uh, and it is a great one. Tell it us is, about it. It is a great one. This is an editor's choice product, and we will tell you why. Uh, Dell make a wide range of products. Some are yeah. expensive. Some are from some are inexpensive. This yeah. is on the uh, the inexpensive end. This is a thousand dollar gaming desktop. So one thousand. It starts at six hundred. So you could really right. get it. You could really get down there for less money. But uh, for a thousand, you get pretty much everything you're gonna hope for for a, a like entry level gaming desktop. Uh, Nvidia GTX 1060. Um, there's a Core i7 processor. There's uh, a terabyte of storage and a little boot SSD for you. So it's got everything. It's kind of no, it's not the super high-end machine. Don't do 4K gaming on it. Don't do QHD gaming on it. But for 1080p uh, gaming, this is a really appealing price point. Now, one thing that uh, I know about PC gamers is that they are very opinionated. And so no. if you, <laughs> if you uh, have opinions or questions about this or any other gaming desktop or laptop or whatever you want, definitely ask us. Put mm -hmm. those questions in the comments uh, in the Facebook, uh, right below the Facebook video. Uh, and we will um, answer them for you. Or if you're watching this later somewhere else on the internet, uh, come back tomorrow we'll, 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 uh, on Facebook and we'll answer your questions then. Um, so yeah, a $1,000 gaming desktop with a, a 1060, that's gonna cover you know a that's, wide range yeah. of gaming needs, basically. Yeah, that's, um, to, to get this level of performance on past generations of hardware, it would have been, been more expensive. Uh, this can do yeah. the 60 frame HD gaming for $1,000, I mean, Years ago, that seems uh, pretty pretty difficult. Um, but uh, in addition, I, I kind of like the design. I, I hear that some people maybe not, might See, not be. See, this is another opinionated thing, another right? Thing. Because they can make a plain looking, I think, yeah, I kind of like it too. But people are going to say, well, no, there should be more accoutrements. Well, yeah, I, it's got this <laughs> half two-tone thing. There's, I don't know how well it comes through our camera, but it's glowing blue internally. But it's not, it's not aggressive. It's not out. Uh, there's not none of the exterior, really. It's just if you catch it at a right angle through these... Uh, through these slots, through these vents, mm -hmm. um, you get uh, you get a nice blue glow, um, and I think it's restrained. It's 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 not like a boring business tower necessarily, but it's also not like an over aggressive gaming right. machine. Is this customizable? Uh, can you adjust the I don't lighting so. here? It's you can't blue. adjust it. Okay. Um, but we can get inside and show you what's what. Yes. Let's do now that. Th this is a key thing because you know right now where we are in May 2018, you might want to buy this just for the 1060 and then and then, and then add yeah, more components right. inside. Um, so. so I did say a con was <clears throat> that the interior is a bit messy. Um, oh, is it's it? not much to look at. The wires, this, the cable management is, you know. Yeah, it's, and it, this it's, this thing appears to be off center here. Yeah, the, well, uh, yeah, the uh, the cooler. The well, yeah, it has to be because of the um, yeah because of the brackets for the mm -hmm. CPU, but. Um, it's <laughs> yes. not. It's not the most aesthetic look. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so you know, it's a bit. It's a bit messy inside. It's obviously a thousand dollars. You're not paying for like the made to be seen right. boutique build, sure. like with cooling pipes and all, what have you. It's got a. It's got a fan based CPU cooler. Um, there's little case fans here, um, but the wires are kind of out and about. But you know, the side stays on. You buy it to plug and play. This is kind of if it's a thousand dollars and you're buying it. Pre-made, you're probably not a tinkerer to begin with. Sure. Um, you could definitely build a, a similar uh, gaming desktop yourself if you have the know-how. But probably not price. for $1,000. Probably not for $1,000. The mm -hmm. GPU alone will get you pretty close to that. Yeah. I mean, the 1060 right now, yeah. but um, depending on, on how you can find it. But yeah, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's not made to be seen, but it does the job. And if you buy it, and you could easily just buy it and never take this cover off and be none the wiser to the interior, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that that it really is appealing, and it seemed to be pretty easy to take off. Yeah. The cover is not one of those things where you have no. to unscrew, well, I guess- There were, there were two there screws. There are yeah, screws, we left them out for, okay. It's two, it's two screws, All right, so it's that's, super simple. That's actually fairly conventional. Basically what they've done is they've taken a standard uh, desktop tower, made it a little bit, a little tiny bit of flare here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we should look at some ports, right? Because yeah, that a, is going to be a huge thing. Those. Why you'd buy a desktop over a laptop? Right in the front, you get like more USB. You can shake a stick at. There's four of them. There's two super speed USB 3.0s. Mm -hmm. um, the back, there's even more uh, USBs for days. Uh, Ethernet, <laughs> uh, Display Port, two more USBs. Um, obviously, the graphics card itself. Nvidia's usual suite of one HDMI and three more Display Ports, um, and that's what you get. For that, um, there's nothing fancy like USB-C or Thunderbolt 3, but again, $1,000. Right. Now, about that $1,000, we should talk about customization options, and we should also talk 
about the actual performance. But before we do, let's take some questions. I guess this is just going to roll into what you're going to be talking about, but whether uh, any sort of cooling options are on the table there, like whether someone could get liquid cooling if they want. I don't think it scales up to liquid cooling. That would be surprising, mostly because of uh, the need to put a radiator in here, and I don't see where that's happening necessarily. I don't. Uh, it's a pretty small case. Um, you could probably fit one with some with some tinkering, but there's no top ventilation. There's not really any room for a side one. You could probably squeeze one in here somewhere if you're really determined. But um, however, I don't think it's, I, I also, you also don't need. <laughs> one. Let me just point out, like you just said, you don't need one for this because, <laughs> yeah. as configured, again, we can talk about you know options. But this machine right here, uh, the processor is not overclockable, mm -hmm. right? Um, you could overclock the, 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 the GPU, but ultimately you do not need liquid cooling for, right. for, for, uh, great, for good gaming. gameplay that you're going to get from here. You do not need liquid cooling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely overkill on a system like this. Um, you know, the case, the case cooling is definitely simple. Uh, it's, you know, case fan, CPU cooler. There's not, there's not even um, front fans as far as they see. So. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now let's talk about processor uh, and what yeah. are the options there I was for memory go over storage. Here and remind like myself that. too for the configuration options. Okay. Because um, someone asked how you can configure it. Um, no, that does not include liquid cooling, but um, it does include some other options. So the the power supply in there is 460 watts to mm -hmm. begin with. Um, it's a Core i7 800, 8, 8700 CPU, so it's Coffee Lake. Okay. So it's super fast to begin with. Right. Um, the 1060, 8 gigs of memory. The SSD is 128 gigs. You can get it up to 16 gigs of, mem of uh, RAM, 16 gigabytes of RAM rather, or uh, up to a GTX 1070, or down to a GTX 1050. Mm -hmm. So that's and, a pretty wide range. And presumably that 1050 is the, the $600 yeah. base model. Yeah, it's where which, it begins. I mean, for, and, and ultimately, that actually is probably a better deal than this, right? If yeah. you got a 1050 with, uh, for, for $600 with your gaming desktop, to me, not that that's not you're going to be able to play a lot of stuff. I think you get a Core i5. Okay, too, yeah, so, Core yeah. i5. I mean, you're not going to be, certainly, you're going to keep, you know, demanding titles to lower resolutions, mm -hmm. but to me, that's heck of a value for, <laughs> yeah, for so for that, sure. that would, for you sure. know, if, if you're really looking for an entry pr price point, that's cheaper. We didn't test that version, mm -hmm. but, you know, but just, it does just keep in mind. And yeah, scaling up to a 1070, um, it's not going to get you 4K gaming in 60 frames, but you could probably do QHD, and then you could do... Uh, you could do the highest settings on every game and not worry about it. Because sometimes with the 1060, if it's the most demanding game you're playing, it's frantic. Yeah. You might get some frame dips right. here and there. Well, we should uh, talk about what you found. But but the one thing that comes, comes uh, sticks out to me about the specs is the 128 gigabyte SSD. Mm, that's a nice little bonus for so cheap. That's good. And yeah. it includes a one terabyte hard drive, for right? actually storing your games. Yeah. But I, I would want to boost the storage. Yeah, Honestly. you want more more, yeah. more storage than that. Um, once when it's good for throwing your SS uh, th for throwing your uh, your OS onto, so it boots quickly. Throw a couple of the the programs and maybe games you use a lot on the SSD, and then just leave it and put the rest of your stuff on the hard drive. But mm -hmm. what you would up the storage on the yeah. hard drive or the SSD? I, I mean, I would want at least two hundred fifty six gigabyte um, uh, boot drive SSD because Windows takes up a lot of space. If you're putting you know programs on here like sure. Office things like that, that 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 adds up quickly. Fair enough, um, but Tom, you know Tom loves the storage, so I, I can't I can't fault him for loving the storage. Um, so I mentioned the Coffee Lake processor. That's Intel's newest generation. That's eighth gen. Um, it has shown not so much for gaming. I mean, the gaming boost is as usual with the CPU. It's moderate. Um, it, gaming is often throttled more often throttled by the GPU than right. the CPU. Uh, there's a pretty good base floor of processor you can get that's not going to affect. After you reach that threshold, your gameplay is going to be affected less and less. Um, Obviously, a better processor is going to continue to help, but it's diminishing returns for gaming. The real, the real bottleneck is the is the GPU. That said, outside of gaming, since this is a desktop, you're probably going to use it for other things besides gaming. Uh, you just pull, you know, multitasking, throwing up. If you're like a, if you do media projects, you might do some editing, some video editing on the side at home. Um, it maybe wouldn't be the machine I'd go for if I was like a hardcore professional and I needed sure. to churn through. Again, only eight gigs of RAM in this model. You could up that to 16 very easily. Um, so the that's, standout feature there, that's though, the main but, that it is the Coffee Lake. But piece. the Coffee Lake GPU yeah. uh, for for media projects, if you're doing coding video or if you're running Photoshop filters, um, it's much better at that than the previous generation. And we do have numbers. Yeah, let's to look show at some actual frame rates and games, and then we'll take some more questions. Yeah. Um, first, just on the media side, yeah, you can see 
This, um, the other Dell XPS, the the, uh, the other Dell rather, the XPS also has the same processor. So mm -hmm. that's the only one, the other one that matched it. But you can see in the HP and the uh, Lenovo, which not to knock them, they, they we just reviewed them when the new processors weren't out yet. Yeah. Um, you can see the difference. It shaves a bunch of time off all the time tests. Uh, the Cinebench score is like nearly double in some cases, um, or double. Uh, and Cinebench is actually something that really takes advantage not only of the of, of the CPU, but specifically the number of cores in the yeah, CPU. Are the cores the same here, or are, there, are they different? I believe it's six and then four, so. Okay, so um, that's why, that's that's a huge reason right. why. Right, so you are getting more cores. Anything that relies on multi-threading is much more successful on the new Coffee Lake processors. So the fact that that's baked into the price at $1,000, because that usually does come with a $100 or $200 price bump mm -hmm. um, per Microsoft's sort of demands mm -hmm. um, with the systems, uh, that is, um, that's pretty good that it's still 1,000 and has the newest, the newest processor. So let's look at gaming, but let's take another question before we do that. If you were building a, a system like this on your own, like buying all the parts individually, do you feel like this would stack up like price-wise pretty well? Um, I think you could probably get it in for a bit cheaper, um, under, under 1,000, I would say. Um, the 1060, the, I haven't looked at the price recently. Obviously, the prices are fluctuating because of the crypto still. Uh, which is ridiculous because that's not even worth it anymore, but there's market's still all over the place because of it. Um, depending on 1060, say between, I don't know, you could probably get one for like 800 if you if you shopped really well for similar parts. Um, which is absurd, that's a lot of money yeah, for that's, 1060. Yeah, um, <laughs> No, no, I meant like total. For oh, the whole total. Desktop. Yeah, okay, I was you really say, three or four hundred yeah. for the for the ten sixty. Okay. I forget what the actual MSRP. Um, and then the other parts, you could probably find a cheaper PSU if you wanted to. You could probably find cheaper, like a really good RAM deal mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Um, and you can skimp on the case too. I mean, you know, right. some, you could spend easily two, three hundred dollars on a case, or you could spend fifty. Right. Um, so yeah, and then you obviously have to assemble it yourself. So maybe you save a couple hundred dollars. Um, for a lot of people that either they don't have the know-how or that's just not worth it to them, they want to buy something built and not think about it, or they're buying a system for their kid or someone who doesn't know anything about computers and they just want to set it up and run. So yeah, you can almost always DIY a little cheaper, but um, it's not going to be dramatic in this case because that's a that's a pretty low threshold to begin. Like the, just to get all those parts, you're going to be pretty close to this price point. Um, maybe I would say like two hundred dollars less is probably the most you can cut off. Just total ballparking it off the top of my head. Um, I'm trying to think of anything in here that would be particularly expensive. Uh, terabyte hard drive is cheap yeah, these days. Yeah, those are extremely those are cheap. Nothing. SSDs are even cheap. SSDs are pretty cheap. The RAM actually right now, RAM's also expensive, yeah. um, which is weird. But, but they've uh, got eight gigabytes in here, so that's that's yeah, on that's, the low end. Right, that's not too hard to match. Now, um, okay, frame rates for the actual gaming yes. simulations that we did. What have we, what have we got here? Um, so, yeah, like I said, just over 60. Uh, 60, is the, 60 frames per second is kind of an ideal target when you're talking about um, gaming, you could do 30, but it's not it's not as good. Yeah. You want those smooth, you want those smooth <laughs> Higher frames. is better, Higher as is you better. can see here um, in the chart. So once you hit 60, you're pretty you're pretty good. That's where you want to be. So on the, the two main columns here are what you want to look at. Um, this is the Heaven and Valley, which are gaming tests. They run simulated benchmarks. Um, or they run simulated games and, and give you the average frames per second after they're done simulating. Um, and that's on ultra quality settings, and that's at HD. Um, which is... A great, which is what you'll be, yeah, what you what you'll be you playing know, at yeah. on the 1060. That's what you want to aim for. Yeah. Uh, so 67 and 77 frames per second on those two tests. That's over 60. Like I said, more demanding games may end up kind of right. Draw, dipping you're, up you're and down. We're kind of at the lower floor of right. that 60. I mean, you're gonna and obvi obviously on this test, you probably saw some frames in the 40s and 50s range and some in the 80s range. Right. Exactly. So um, and that's exactly for a really good comparison because the XPS tower has the same processor and everything, uh, but it has a 1070, which you can upgrade to on the system if you want. Um, but you can see the difference between the 1070 yeah. and the 1060 on the same tests. Uh, 67 with the 1060 and 99 frames with the 1070, and yeah. then on Valley 77 and 109. So it is a pretty big gulf. Um, it's like I said, not going to catapult you to, to like reliable 4K gaming, but either QHD is, is more yeah. doable, um, and HD is is you know you don't have to worry about settings at all. You'll definitely crush it. But uh, I, I just want to point out too though that if you're not planning on using this for gaming, you can really see here the the small difference. And this is a very simple graphics test, mm -hmm. which which is you know for things like you know just normal programs, there isn't a huge difference here. You're not going to get like the difference between a 1060 and a 1070. Not that this is relevant, but you know there's there's such a small difference here. So which really tells you. Don't upgrade this if you're not going to use it for gaming. Yeah, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably say that. <laughs> Look like, at yeah, these it's, numbers it's, here. It's better. Like it is yeah, better. So a couple thousand points isn't nothing, but it's also like yeah, it's not a professional system, and if it's not going to be also used for gaming, right? Like you said, don't don't go for a 1070. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's kind of the cool. takeaway. The 1060 is very very. 
uh, I don't want to say adequate, that sounds negative. It's it's very competent yeah, yeah, at, uh, yeah. at, at HD gaming. So um, let's take another question. Not, yeah. So is this the sole editor's choice now? Um, yeah, so for this category, we hadn't, um, the other one was, was uh, it was a mix between either suggesting pay a little more for the older XPS tower, which mm -hmm. was, you know, the same processor, but it, it just came out a few months ago, mm -hmm. um, which isn't, which is, you know, Yes, it can be a gaming machine, but it's also a little more, it's, it's a little more pricey, it's a little faster, it's a little more general use. Um, I would have suggested you go for that. The other alternatives, really in the same price point, are the Lenovo Legion Tower, which is a more aggressive, like, gaming kind of red and black look. Um, yeah. You might like the style more. It's even less expensive than the one we reviewed. I think that was $899. Um, so, that, again, another budget option. Um, but that had an i5. The, pri the performance difference there was pretty clear. Yeah. Um, so. You know, and if you're looking for styling, if you're looking between the, the kind of the three things that, that that Matt mentioned in this review are the the, the Omen or, or the Legion Tower, the Omen desktop mm -hmm. from HP, and and this one, this is probably the least stylish of the of those in yeah. terms of uh well. We like it, but yeah. if, if you like um, it's not in a your face flare, styling, right. the, I would say the Omen is probably the, the most, and then the Lenovo, and then and then the XPS. Yeah, uh, I like the kind of understated. I, I like I said, the inside's not what to look at, but when this is on and, and it's kind of a, a sitting in the nice blue glow, um, the XPS tower is even more compact and smaller. If you're looking for that, it's it's a little shorter, a little smaller, but it's just all all completely solid silver, so very little fuss there. Um, that's. Aesthetic is totally, like, it's hard to yeah. talk about because it's always yeah. just totally preference. Yeah. Um, unless something is really aggressively ugly, it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, yeah, we should show you the other side just, just to get it is full in fact, fact here. You can see the, <laughs> the expanse nothing. of gray. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's what you've been dying to see. Um, but yeah, for $1,000, um, it's rel it's not it's not small, but it's uh, it's not big. Um, it looks, I think, looks nice. Um, a little, just enough style to to not be boring. If you've been um, using a 9 series or an 8 series graphics card for five years or so, great upgrade. Yeah, if, um, yeah, if you're looking for a whole system you know, upgrade, not, I mean, just, a, is, not yeah. just a graphics card swap, this is a really easy way to do it. Yeah. It is configurable, like I said, you can go from a 1050 to a 1070. You have different amounts of RAM, different amounts of storage, so the options uh, are plentiful. Um, that's why it's another choice. Yeah, and it's relatively inexpensive at $1,000, and we gave it four stars, and you can read the full review at PCMag.com, which we suggest that you do because get the lowdown. You can get our opinions, and then you can also, you know, form your own. And you can more <laughs> easily compare to the other options out there. Yeah, right. Like exactly. You can, you can click through and see what else is uh, is on the table. But having looked at them all, um, Coffee Lake is a big pull. Obviously, it's not going to be the only system with Coffee Lake. After they all revamp, they'll all have they'll all have the new processor. But uh, right now, that's a really appealing, right. really appealing draw. So the Inspiron gaming desktop. Uh, thousand dollars editor's choice award. Uh, we will. Oh, do we have another question? Oh. Sorry. Come on <laughs> in. I think you may have mentioned this earlier, but what's the maximum amount of RAM you can get in there? Um, I don't actually remember if I did say. It, there's only uh, two other probably open open dim right? slots, but it's probably thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, throw a couple eights in there. Throw you, sixteen in there. You I don't. Think the highest you can order is sixteen, though. Uh, okay. But aftermarket, you could you could put more in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't need much more than you certainly don't need more than thirty-two for for a budget gaming range. No. Uh, yeah, anyway, so check out the full overview at PCMag.com. Thank you very much for watching, and we will be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. on Facebook for yet another one cool thing for you.